Good day, listeners. How is everyone going? This is Saba from the Silly Makugus project. Welcome to an episode of my Silly Talks music podcast. I wanted to do like forever, but because I needed a good guide to help me navigate the topic I'm about to introduce and had someone specific in mind to be that guide, I was willing to wait until that artist finally had some time to talk to me about her world. And I'm stoked to say we finally made it. Everyone, meet Fanny Lumsden, an awesome female country artist from Australia. And yes, we'll be talking about the genre that still causes mixed reactions in the world. For example, I remember dropping a post on my Silly McWiggles blog about one of Keith Urban's singles, and I shared then that I really liked country music. And believe it or not, but even some of my friends and blog readers would cringe and be like, seriously? So let me give you a bit of a context as to why I wanted to talk about it at all. I've never been to Nashville, but in 2016 I made an epic trip to Texas to visit some friends who were living there at the time. And you know, there's heaps of country music in Texas too. Many renowned bands and legendary artists are from that American state, like Willie Nelson, Kenny Rogers, Miranda Lambert, Casey Musgraves and The Chicks. I bet you recognize at least one of those acts. And I guess when you are in the midst of that environment, lifestyle and culture, you start understanding and appreciating the sound and style a bit more. At least that's what happened to me. When I moved to Australia next, I was quite surprised to find out there is a fairly big country music scene that land down under too. So step by step, I started learning more about it. And that's how I came across Fanny Lamsden and her music. You'll hear more in-depth personal stories about the artist herself in the Anchor episode. But first things first, let's set some context for this chat. Fanny is going to give us an overview of the country scene in Australia and tell us how her sound fits in. So let's start this episode on a fun note. I read somewhere that when Fanny started her adventure in the music business, she didn't really know that the genre she was creating was country. She only realized that after the audience's reaction at a festival she played. So, is this a true story? Yeah, that's a kind of a a very like kind of um, broken down version. Um, I loved country music growing up. I listened to it all the time. I grew up on a farm, um, very like country music very much is my like culture <laughs> for lack of a better description um you know like my dad my dad is like we he's never not worn a big hat and boots and jeans like that's what he wears everywhere every day um and um we rode horses and went to camp drafts and did like lots of country stuff so that was already kind of who I was um essentially but I started writing songs and I was kind of in my rejection period for that. And so I was writing much, I thought I was way more indie folk um, Mm -hmm. at that time. Um, And I kind of was just at the tail end of my rejection of country. I've now worked out. And I, yeah, we went to the Tamworth Country Music Festival and, um, and got up and played at somebody else's show. We just played a song and the crowd were amazing. Like they responded really well. And I was like, oh, maybe, maybe we could lean into this again like maybe maybe I am this like and so yeah I think it was a gradual process of me being just accepting that what I was doing was country oh okay Uh, you know and the reason I'm asking as well is because there is a lot of artists who when they go into this business they already have like the mindset on a specific genre they want to kind of make the music in and then they are kind of doing that and in your case, I guess it's you you probably knew it deep down in your heart. You tried to reject it and maybe do something else. And then you kind of arrived to this conclusion that I can't get away from it, <laughs> which is... A, a yeah. Nice and I think that that is really, like, I'm really glad that that happened because it, it meant that I started my career off in, like, building much broader networks, not just specific genre specific networks and so and that has helped me to no end like I cannot stress enough how much that kind of 
um, I suppose, like foundation of a broad network for music industry has helped build us to where we are today because I just... And also sound wise, like I I don't really believe in any kind of rules around it. Like, sure, I write country music because I am a country person. I live in the country and I write music from the perspective of someone who lives in the country about things that happen there. Therefore, I'm a country artist. Sonically, I don't feel bound to like having to sound a certain way. I'm just like, no, the song is the song and we will help it stand up the way it needs to stand up. I like the way Fanny put it, because the topic of genres is pretty tricky and fluid these days anyway. There are so many different subcategories and new things coming almost every day, and not one artist can label themselves as being faithful to only one style, right? But country music seems to be much more than just a genre. It almost feels like a lifestyle or a life choice, if you will. So I pose this very broad question to Fanny. What is the status of country music in Australia today? Yeah, country is um, a really rapidly growing um, industry. I think it's like the fastest growing music, like music genre in the world at the moment. Um, okay. It's really massive. Um, obviously, it's huge in the States, like you said. Um, in Australia, it is also like that is being reflected here as well. I think where they're maybe the second largest market or third largest market, just not like, I mean, proportional, like, I mean, to our size. Um, like after, I think maybe we're third, uh, like so America, Canada and Australia in terms of country markets. Um, it's, um, and there's like, there's like in every kind of genre, there's like lots of sub genres, but country specifically, cause it's very, very broad church, <laughs> right? So there's like, there's like, there's a huge range. Um, however, let's start with the one that you're more familiar with, with might be like more Nashville kind of sound, which is more recently had more of an impact here in Australia. There's more artists currently that sound like that than don't, I think, in Australia. There's a lot of artists that are up and coming that are, or that are really established that have that kind of Nashville flavor, if you will. Um, so then you have kind of your more um, kind of like alt scene, like the alt country scene, which is really interesting. It's full of incredible Australian artists as well. Um, and that's kind of where we sat coming mm -hmm. into country. So I'm kind of I'm definitely in the more in the alter I'm called alternate country, even though I'm like that's kind of like Americana essentially. Okay. So yeah, so the main kind of I suppose like the hub or whatever of country music in Australia is a place called Tamworth, Tamworth Country Music Festival, um, which has been held must be like 50 years 51 years 52 years I think we're around I think I think maybe the 50th anniversary is a couple of years ago um of the awards and there's big awards there which are called the golden guitars um and then yeah they're very well like attended and respected and um lots of categories and it's a big show that whole thing country awards do red carpet and everything like that. That's held in January every year. So Tamworth is kind of like the Mecca, let's say, in Australia, like the festival that you want to play being a country artist, right? Yeah, it is. It's um, it's a different type of festival, though. It's like, um, I think it's kind of like more like CMA Fest in Nashville. Um, it's kind of like where there's artists playing in all different venues. It's not like you go to one big thing. Um, there's artists playing in all sorts of venues all over the place. There's music all the way down the main street and it goes over 10 days. Um, so like we'll, we have our own show there and it's at a venue and people have got to come buy tickets to my show. They don't just buy a ticket to the whole festival. But there's a lot of stuff that also happens there, lots of press, lots of events and a lot of um, uh, like, yeah, like the whole place is kind of like, sh like the main streets are all shut off and there's lots of, you know, buskers and all that kind of stuff as well. And then the awards are during that week as well in Tamworth. Okay. So, so that's the, the golden guitars, correct? So that's the kind of like the correct. country areas. Could you say that in, in a sense? Yeah. Yeah. It's like the, it's like the CM double, like the CMA is okay. kind of, thing. yeah, yeah, yeah. Genre specific awards, but done really well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But then there are a lot of other country festivals that are kind of coming up. There's one called CMC Rocks, which is like a really big kind of country, really Nashville kind of country 
and they get big Nashville artists out for it. That um that is a really big festival. There's other ones that are a bit more abroad called Groundwater, which is an amazing festival um on the Gold Coast. And there's one called Gimpy Master, um, Jenny Ute Master. I could keep going for a long time. There, there are a lot, there are a lot, um, I think more than people know. Yeah. <laughs> and like a lot of people, and like lots of and what again, like you said, like the industry itself is very well supported like it's an amazing community and I really benefited from that coming from like kind of like that indie whatever floating around folk world um coming into this very orderly like systematic kind of structured um industry like country has already like it has country radio and they're all these country radio stations that are like, you know, if you put out a song as country, they'll get service to those stations and they play country music specifically. Um, And then there's, you know, like the award systems as well, which help obviously um, as you're kind of building and as you're going. um, CMC, which is, well, well, CMC, now it's CMT, which is on Foxtel, which is like like, uh, like MTV. Um, And so videos is a huge thing through that um there is just a lot of I suppose infrastructure and kind of ways that you can kind of make it there's lots of competitions and stuff as well I never did that stuff um but yeah it's also just a great community like there's not many communities that all come together once a year at something like Tamworth you Mm -hmm. know it's kind of this one week where everybody's there and um gets to catch up and that really builds and fosters I think a strong community which is great so do you think that you can kind of make it you know when you don't live in Nashville absolutely yes I fully fully think yes you do not need to move to Nashville or or make it in the Nashville world or version of America and make it as an artist I mean like that in itself is a question that you could like sit and argue over like what is making it right like you know, people, everyone has a different version of that. Like maybe it's getting their song on the radio or maybe it's like, I don't know, doing arena tours. Like it's this, it's just kind of an endless kind of, kind of scale. Um, And yeah, I like, I, we are at the moment m- much more interested in the UK Europe market than we are in Nashville. Um, I don't necessarily want to play the Nashville game. It's a very top down industry over there and it works perfectly for some types of artists. But for an artist like me, I don't think it really would. And I don't really want to make it um, because I just, the way we've done things is our own. And I really like that. And, and I have really, we went over to the UK this year and we played at Glastonbury. The crowds were amazing over there. We absolutely loved it. So we were just like, this is a no brainer. We all felt so good there too. Like we felt so supported and we're like, no, I don't, I don't think that I need, I need it to be like the Mecca for me to like build my, like, you know, further my career overseas. Um, we've played in Nashville a couple of times. Um, but yeah, again, I'm, I'm not, I'm not overly con- convinced that you have to do that. Um, some artists, yes. Um, you know, there's other artists in Australia that like, you know, they might've played over there, but again, they've got fully amazingly fledged careers here and, I think especially now you can you can make whatever kind of career you want and be successful. And something else that you mentioned, kind of like maybe b- between the lines, th- is this a very male oriented kind of genre or like, you know, where males dominate still? Yes, <laughs> is the short answer. Um, not that there are not a, like there are a lot of incredible artists out there, um, female artists. But it is the same old kind of thing as every genre, like, you know, festival lineups and getting more females on festival lineups and that kind of stuff is always a struggle. Um, I mean, like, it's not a secret. Everybody knows that. Um, There's often like only one or two kind of like maybe one headline-ish spot for a female versus like five dudes. So um, on a lot of festivals. So it makes it kind of tricky. Um, but in saying that, there's a lot of incredible female talent that is like coming up right now. And so I'm really hopeful like that, you know, hopefully this, you know, the tides will all change, the generations will change and um, and that will kind of, you know, that'll that'll mix it up um, a little bit more. But yes, it is very male dominated. Um, but, you know, here's what it is. 
Yeah, exactly. So I guess it's uh, no different from like the general kind of tendency in the music. No, there's no exception to the rule. Maybe it's just a little bit behind, a little bit more behind. <laughs> just so you know, Fanny mentioned heaps of great Aussie country artists when we spoke. Like Casey Chambers, who was the youngest solo female artist to be inducted into the ARIA Hall of Fame in 2018 for her culture impact within Australia. Fanny also talked about Brad Cox, who performed at the ARIA Awards this year. And we also briefly chatted about Morgan Evans, an Aussie artist who relocated to Nashville to further his career. On a side note here, and just so you understand the context, ARIA, the Aussie Recording Industry Association, is like the American Recording Academy, and the ARIA Awards are like the American Grammys. Going back to the topic of great Aussie country artists, it's impossible to mention everyone off the top of your head in a few minutes. So I asked Fanny to put together a playlist with her Australian country music peers and favorites. That way you have a much better understanding of the genre within the country, as in the state or the market. Make sure you check out the playlist after listening to this episode. The link to it is in the show notes. But I also wanted to chat about Fanny's music in this interview. So let's quickly run through some important facts. Fanny has released four albums so far. Small Town Big Shot in 2015, Real Class Act in 2017, Fallow in 2020, just in time for the pandemic, and most recently, in August 2023, she dropped the album called Hey Dawn. I was living in Australia when the second record dropped. And that's when I started to hear Fanny's name mentioned on the radio and in the music biz a bit more. But her big break came a bit later. So that's what we're talking about in this next segment. Would you agree that Fallow was the one that kind of like propelled you a bit more, like and your name became a bit more, um, you know, kind of known in the music industry in general? Definitely, definitely. Yeah, the, the rest, the, the other two kind of blew my mind every time. Like the first one, it was my first one. You don't know what's going to happen. All these kind of milestones were broken for me because I had nothing really before that. So I was just like, wow, this is amazing, which led to the second one. And then that second one, just before that, at the end of the first one, actually, is when we first started getting some like emerging awards and all that kind of stuff. Um, Started getting a bit of hype and all that kind of thing. But like, yeah, and then the next one kind of cemented us in the country world. But then the next album, Fallow, like I said, that was the one that was um, much broader, like it, its critical acclaim and like all its awards and all its like response was so much broader and so much, so much more. <laughs> um, I think, you know, it's hard to know, but like I, that was probably, like I don't think that that will ever happen again, all those timing and all the different things of that album and came out the start of, of COVID, like the first yeah. week, um, all of the time and after the fires and everything, all of the timing of that record um, kind of culminated into this incredible response, um, both from the industry and from fans that I'm not sure will ever happen again for me because it was so crazy. Um but in a but things happen in different ways now, right? And like that's fine. But yeah, it was a very big moment for us as an as artists. But at the same time, we were at home, so like it kind of felt very normal. And I was just like, you know, we're all stuck at home. Everyone's stuck at home. But I was on a farm, so I could like, you know, go for. A, we went camping just on the paddock over there, and you know, just like I was just doing very normal stuff every day. But it was yeah, it was awesome. So. What I sometimes wonder about in, is like when you have this album that is kind of like the breakthrough and like and all of a sudden everybody talks about you and then obviously you release the next thing. So, and there is, I can imagine only that there must be like so much pressure on yourself, you know, and like from the external kind of circumstances, like from the business itself. And also you put pressure on yourself because you want to do something equally good or like you, you want to kind of outdo yourself and stuff. So how do you approach like not going mental, if you know what I mean? So, you know, <laughs> from the, the get-go, when you sit down to write the next thing, I guess it's like, oh my God, I just have to come up with something better. So it might not be as natural maybe, you know, as it might have been if you didn't have that pressure on you. So how do you approach writing the this last one now? <laughs> it's it's very true. Everything that you said is true. Um, good observation. It was, it was tricky. I... I'd like to pretend I didn't care and I could be aloof, but like 
that's not true. That's a lie. And so I'm not into lying about this stuff. So um, I did feel pressure. Um, and well, for the songwriting, I never really think about anything else when I'm writing a song. Like I'm not thinking about, will like someone like this when I'm writing a song? I'm, or will this be good for the industry? It's more when you kind of bring them all together and then make an album. Um, but in the song, in the moment of writing songs, I never think about that, which is lucky. Um, however, I didn't write for much, like a long time during that COVID period. And, and then there was like lots of stuff going on. And then we ended up driving accidentally around the whole of Australia <laughs> in the second year of COVID um, after getting locked out of different states and stuff. And, um, and it was during that period that I kind of started writing and I unlocked a lot of stories. And I think I just let go of a lot of stress and, and I didn't have a timeline in, like we just did, my label were amazing. They were just like, well, you just tell us when you're ready and we'll do that. And so we just really, I just took my time and I think time and space really allowed me to just like kind of, you know, that was a big time in terms of the album went so well. The story was so strong around it as well. Like the locations based, you know, all my albums kind of have a sense of place. And that one had very much a mountain kind of um, where I am here, but also had the fires that happened here. So that was attached to it too. And then it had its industry success. So it had this big, strong story around it. And I just allowed myself time on Hey Dawn to kind of just like find the songs, sounds woo-woo, but it's true, find them and then work out what the story was. But when we were in the recording process, I um I was struggling for the first kind of week um to try and be like, oh, like, how do I do this? I don't even know if I like this. Like, ah. Um, but one morning um, we moved studios because we had this big, huge storm, brought all these trees down. Um, the studio was had cut off power for like a week and we we were like, we're going to have to move. So we were in Tasmania. So we went over to the east coast of Tasmania and it was on the beach. And I, I woke up one morning and um, just as the sun was coming over the horizon and I literally said to the sun, I said, hey, Dawn. Like I just was like, hey, Dawn. <laughs> and um but I kept thinking about that moment. Like I kept thinking about that sun popping over the horizon for some reason that day. I kept going like that moment is never going to happen again. How nuts is that? Never, ever. I was just having one of those existential like little moments. And, um, and then it was during that kind of day that I just realized that I was like, who cares? I've just got to write this song for right now. It's all I can, I can, all I can control is, making the best thing I can now. And it doesn't matter whether it's better or worse than the last one because it doesn't need to be compared. It's just, I've just got to be, I've got to be at peace with that. And once I was at peace with it, it kind of all just kind of came together, I think. So, yeah. Oh, that's I great. Don't know. Yeah, no, I think it's great that you would feel that way because I, I think this can sometimes destroy you if you want to kind of compare yourself to your previous work or you know to someone else so kind of finding that balance and like being aware of that you know I'm just doing what's best for me and what, how I feel in the moment I guess it's the best thing in life I think you can act like my goal is to always get better like everything we do when we do it the next time I want it to be better like it needs to be better um in whatever element that means um but like I don't think like that, I mean, yeah, like that's all you can really control. So like, I was like, as long as I am so proud of what I'm making, I've made no sacrifices on, and like we get to the end of this record and these songs are amazing in their own right. It doesn't matter how it does in the industry mm -hmm. or how other people perceive it. As long as I love it, we're good. Okay, so I need to interject here. Fanny is a very humble artist and I sense that she's not into awards very much. Although she did mention elsewhere during our chat that it's obviously nice to receive them and she does keep them in an honorary place at home. But I think it's also fair to mention the most recent trophy. When we chatted, it was just before the 2023 Arias in Australia and once again, they're the Aussie Grammys. Not only was she later invited to perform at the ceremony, but she also took the Best Country Album gong for her latest release, Hey Dawn. But wait, that's not all. On top of that, she was announced as the winner by none other than Dolly Parton herself. How cool is that? Fanny also boasts a few golden guitars that we spoke about earlier and other accolades. And this info is just for you to understand her place and her role in the music industry in Australia. 
She makes country music fun, fresh and approachable for new generations, in my humble view. As you can imagine, Fanny is also a touring artist. We'll talk about their live performances and their logistics in the Encore episode. But aside from her regular gigs, she runs a pretty cool initiative called Country Halls Tours. So in the last part of this episode, she's going to walk us through the whole concept. Yeah, so the Country Halls Tour is a tour that we started in 2012. Um, and we go out and put on full band, full production shows in little tiny country halls, like in halls in little villages or towns or in the middle of paddocks. They're like sometimes in the middle. And um, how it works is that um, the halls all apply to, to me. They all apply to host. And then um, I work through the applications and then we try and schedule in as many as we can. Um, and we so then we put on the show. So we are essentially the promoters as well as the artists and then we run the shows as well. So, um, and they've just, been, we've done hundreds and hundreds of them all over Australia. And we just started in New Zealand as well. And um, oh, wow. and they're just such a joy, like kids to grandparents, like everybody, the whole community comes. There's, we um, we very much um, like, run, like they're run as community run events. So we help the whole community to run it. Um, we have like, you know, information kind of sheets and like, and help them constantly on the phone on the way to kind of so that they're, they're like, they are running it themselves. And, um and they also, you know, like they'll run the food and that goes back into like, maybe a, like a school group or, um you know, a sports club will run the bar and then, the, and then that money is also kind of staying local. Um, and it's, you know, it's just a really great, uh, it's probably my favorite and my proudest thing that, that um, I kind of have done and built through my career is definitely the Country Horse Tour. And um, we're selling, we're celebrating the 10 years, but I think it'll be 12 years by the time we're out on the road for this tour because I had to postpone it. Um, <laughs> so, and we're doing a, um, we're doing a little mini documentary on it as well. Um, so yeah, next year is going to be lots of Country Halls again, which is fun. So one of the questions I wanted to ask you as well is, do you think that if you hadn't grown, like been brought up on a farm, like in a rural kind of area, would you have become a country artist as well? Or actually living in those kind of, in that environment and uh, being surrounded by nature and like the raw things that really helps being a country artist, do you think? For me, yeah. Because for me, what I'm doing is telling stories about the life that I've lived and witnessed. Mm -hmm. um and I've def I very much lived a very like country life like I grew up on a farm I grew up riding horses and and my like I said you know like my whole family's ethos is very country um and so that has had like a huge impact on who I am as a person and how I interact with other people and and community like country like how I where I grew up and the kind of country people I grew up around so hospitable a very community minded very like self deprecating mm -hmm. um very dry humor um and it's shaped me completely those stories that I absorbed as a young person is who I am today like that is who I am today and that is why I want to share the stories that I want to share it's not because I chose to be a country artist I just know that I'm writing stories that are about these people and I'm going to reflect them back to these people and then I also love I also love store like I also love country music in its essence because it was something that I did listen to and relate to growing up because it reflected who I was growing up and so you know I found myself in country music when I was forming my opinions and so you know all of that kind of influence over that time um has to make an impact on on what I write now like it has to because it's like that's what my brain is formed from <laughs> um so yes I think I'm it's hard to know because I I've only ever grown up living in the country I lived in the city for a little while like in Sydney for six years which was an amazing experience um and I absolutely loved it and it was probably what helped me come back to country music or see that I was because it pulled me out of the perspective that I was in and it allowed me to see what I was doing um and who I was as a person a lot clearer um and yeah, so it's hard to know if I would be into country, but maybe I wouldn't. Maybe I'd be writing about my life experiences otherwise. And that might be reflected in some other kind of sound. Right, so that's it for today, ladies and gents. 
Many thanks to Fanny for a very palatable breakdown of the country music scene in Australia. I feel like I've learned heaps from this chat and I hope you have as well. You'll surely appreciate this short lesson even more while listening to the playlist Fanny prepared for us country music amateurs. Don't forget to check it out in the show notes. As usual though, this is just half of my conversation with the artist. In the upcoming Silly Encore, we'll kind of go behind the scenes of a few aspects of Fanny's life and career. She'll reveal the truth behind her stage name, for example. We'll talk about how her agricultural studies pushed her to be a muso in a way. And she'll share how she organizes her life as an independent artist and mom touring with kids. In the meantime, do give Fanny a follow on her socials. Funnily, out of all the platforms, I follow her on Twitter, or X now, where she's very generous with what she shares about her life. Also, feel free to browse more content like this on my other channels, listed under the link tree in the show notes. And do let me know what your fave country artists are in the episodes poll. I treat this podcast as a music discovery tool in a sense as well, so it's always good to add new names to my radar. I'm Saba from the Siri Makwego's blog. Thanks for listening to this episode today and come get more in the Siri Anchor with Fanny soon. 